If you have any hot sauce lovers in your family, this is definitely an item that you're gonna wanna learn how to make at home, especially doing a fermented homemade hot sauce. We are on a mission here at our homestead to make as many things as possible from the food that we grow and cut out store-bought items. And when you turn it into a fermented condiment, not only do you increase the shelf life, how good it's gonna stay on the shelf, but you increase the health part of it because you have a lacto-fermented, so you've got all of that good bacteria that is very beneficial to our gut health. So it's a win-win, plus you get to create whatever flavor profile you want. So for our fermented hot sauce, the first ingredient that you need is fermented peppers. So here I have got unripe jalapenos, and then we have a jar here of, it's kind of a mixture, it's mainly ripe jalapenos, and there's also a little bit underripe ones in there. Now, when it comes to the Scoville rating or the heat factor of your peppers, ripe peppers are hotter and spicier than unripe peppers. So we are doing a mixture, and these are jalapenos, so they're pretty, I find them to be hot. Now, some of you who are real hot sauce spice lover fanatics, you might be laughing at me, but I consider jalapenos to be a hot pepper. So we've got our fermented peppers, and if you wanna learn how to make fermented peppers, then click the link beneath this video, and I have a blog post that will walk you through how to ferment your peppers so that you have those as your base ingredients. So we are going to need to reserve our fermenting liquid here, so we're going to strain that off first. and then just go ahead and pull out your weight. And I also threw in some garlic because who doesn't love garlic? So we've got a little bit of fermented garlic, mainly fermented peppers, and that's the beauty of doing your own homemade hot sauce is you can do any flavor profile that you want to. So we're gonna go ahead and add this to our blender. Now you can see that there are quite a few seeds in mine because I just fermented them with the seeds to give it that extra heat factor because my family likes, I'm the only one in the family that doesn't like a lot of heat, they like the spicy factor. So if you are looking to make it a little bit more mild with a, whatever peppers you're using, if you de-rib them and remove the seeds before fermenting, that does take the heat factor down just a little bit. So now we've got a reserved brine liquid here. And for this, which is about four cups total of our fermented peppers, we are going to add some vinegar. So this is organic white vinegar. You can really get creative here with the types of vinegar you want in order to create different flavor profiles. So you could do apple cider vinegar, you could do a white wine vinegar, really any vinegar that you want you can use and that's gonna change the profile slightly as far as your flavors go. And this video is sponsored by Azure Standard. Azure Standard is where I get most of the ingredients that we're not raising here on our homestead. In fact, it's one of the only places that I can find organic white vinegar that doesn't break the bank. And because for me, white vinegar is typically made out of highly genetically modified crops. So I only use organic vinegar, especially when it's white, in order to avoid those. So this is where I've been able to find the vinegar at a great price. And if you are a first time customer, you can use coupon code MELISSA10 and get 10% off your first order of $50 or more. And we'll have a link below where you can check them out. So I'm gonna just start by adding two tablespoons of this white vinegar. There we go. Now, traditionally, it's usually just hot peppers when you're making your hot sauce and some vinegar. So if you are used to store-bought hot sauce like Tabasco, that's pretty much all theirs is, but that's the beauty of making homemade because you can do all of these different flavor profiles. So if you want it to be a little bit more sweeter, you could add in a little bit of sugar, so like one to two teaspoons of sugar, and you can also add in oil. So here I have melted butter, but this is going to help temper the heat a little bit, as well as once it's in the fridge, once it's totally you know made into a sauce, butter, of course, once it gets cold, is going to harden. But because it's dispersed with so many other ingredients, it's still gonna be pourable, but it's gonna make it a little bit thicker without having, having to add a thickener like xanthan gum or something like that 
and it's salted butter, so it's going to give it its own flavor profile as well. So I have melted just shy of four tablespoons in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour that in. And you could use any type of oil that you wanted. You could, anything that has a, a low flavor profile. Um, I probably wouldn't use a oil that has a really strong flavor profile because you really want the fermented peppers and fermented garlic in here to shine. Now, as far as the acid, we did add in the vinegar, but you could also play around and you could add a little bit of lemon juice or lime juice. Like really, there's all kinds of flavor profiles that you can do. Now we're gonna add in, I'm gonna start with two tablespoons of this reserved brine because I don't wanna get it too runny. And I can always add more liquid in, but once you put it in there and pureed it, there's no taking it out. Okay, and if you've used hot peppers, just be careful when you're opening the lid and breathing in if you've ever dealt with hot peppers before, you're gonna know what I'm talking about uh, because it can be a little rough on the mucous membranes if it's super hot. Oh my gosh, that smells so good, you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a few more tablespoons here of our brine. There we go. So you can see that's gonna be able to pour better. And if you still wanted that to be even thinner, you can add in a little bit more vinegar or a little bit more of the brine. Okay. So just keep in mind this once it's in the fridge, which is where we are going to be storing this for the long term, it will get a little bit thicker because of the butter that we've added in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in just I think one more tablespoon of the brine. So once you get it to your desired consistency, then it's time to bottle it up for long-term storage. So of course you can use a mason jar. If you've got a flip top swing bottle, you can use one of those. I don't actually have an empty one right now because I've got those into extracts at the moment. Or you can just use a glass bottle with a lid, which I'm actually gonna put that this into this bottle. Now, what's the difference between fermented hot sauce versus regular hot sauce? Well, the key there is fermented. So fermented hot sauce is actually very hard to get a true fermented hot sauce from the store. A Tabasco actually begins as a fermented hot sauce. However, a lot of times during bottling, then things will be heated or boiled. I've seen several recipes where people do that and that kills all of the beneficial good bacteria that we, it's one of the goals of fermenting. Not only does it change the flavor profile and increases the life of the product in the fridge or at room temperature, depending on what it is that you're doing, but you get all of the good lacto-ferment and all of that good bacteria but when you heat it, that good bacteria is then destroyed. So if you're doing it for health properties and good gut health, you wanna make sure that it's not being heated before you consume it. And plus, as a homesteader, I have to say, it's one of our goals to make as many things as we can instead of buying it from the store. So this is just one more condiment and one more item that we can easily make at home. And I know that it is healthier because it is truly a lacto-fermented hot sauce. So we are just gonna go ahead and get this in here. So you can kind of see this is the consistency I was aiming for where it's pourable, but it's not completely runny liquid like, you know, straight water. Get our lid in and then this will last in the fridge for months. That's one of the beautiful things about doing a ferment is once it hits cold storage, then it will last for months and months and be ready to use. Now you can use this just like you would hot sauce, you know, drizzle it on things. We actually love to do hot sauce where you mix that with like some sour cream, can make a really delicious dip that has just a little bit of kick or sauce, but so many good ways to work this into your food.